America is under attack from within. Anyone paying attention can see this. But only one man, one book, and one work of God warned over a decade ago about the dark spiritual dimension of this attack. Prove that the vicious attack on America's founding principles was prophesied in your Bible. Next, on The Key of David with Gerald Flurry. Greetings, everyone. I recently offered a new book, America Under Attack, and now about two months later, God has revealed that this book was prophesied in your Bible. Now, that's a dynamically new truth that God has given us and a wonderful understanding more deeply of these prophecies that He has given us and these wonderful truths. And the more we have this understanding, the more we love God's work and are just excited about it and love God for making all of this wonderful truth available to us. Notice this thrilling new prophecy about America under attack, about that book. Over in Ezekiel 2 and verse 9, it says, And when I looked, and behold, a hand was sent unto me, a hand to take this roll of a book that is called here. This new book is hardback. This is a roll of a book. But it doesn't say the little book, which is what I in the past thought it meant. And there's a reason why it's closely related to the little book. But it is a book of lamentations and mourning and woe. Lamentations and mourning and woe. There's some bad news in it, as well as some very good news if we look far enough into it. So, God says here, Go speak to the house of Israel, not to the church of God, which we thought in the past, that's, that was a little book. But here it says, if we look at the context closely, it's to the house of Israel. This is about the nations of Israel and not about a church. It's something different than what we thought and what we think now. The context really does reveal a lot, and we need to keep that in mind. But just think about this book. God is aiming at the nations. The nations. It's for this world, but for three nations in particular. A warning to them because of their problems and difficulties with God. But it's not for the church as, as I thought in the past. Notice Ezekiel 3 and verse 1, and I'll read this one as well. This is a part of the new revelation. Here's what it says Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that you find. And now this is like the little book, but still we're not into a little book. Eat this roll. And it's about nations, nations. It's a huge prophecy. And God even prophesies this very book in His Bible prophecy. One third of your Bible is prophecy. But it's about the house of Israel, or three nations in particular. You can read about that in our book on the United States and Britain in Prophecy. What a uh, powerful book that is and what all it explains to you. If you haven't requested it, please do so, because all of our literature is free. It costs you nothing. The little book, I'll talk to you just briefly about that. I was wrong about what I thought was the little book. It's not the little book, but it does what the little book does when you put all these things together. Revelation 10 and verse 8, it says, And the voice which I heard from heaven spoke unto me again and said, Go and take the little book. We have a booklet on the little book telling you exactly what that little book is. And we'll send that to you if you request it. Verse 9 says, 
And I went unto the angel, and said unto him, Give me the little book. Take, and eat it up, and it shall make your belly bitter, but it shall be in your mouth sweet as honey." There's something really sweet about this. If you look at it deeply and ask God for His understanding, it is sweet, sweet as honey. And this certainly this new revelation is. Then in verse 10 it says, And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. This was from God and brought by an angel. And so this little book is actually mentioned in this prophecy I'm talking about, but it's only a small part of the main subject. And I'll show you that as we go along. But if you look at the New Throne of David, there is something here I'd like to go back and give you a little history of what's happening in God's work and in God's church and in uh, three nations of Israel in particular. Notice 2 Kings 14 and verse 26. 2 Kings, that's one of the former prophets. Ninety percent of that prophecy is for this end time, for all of the prophecy. It's for this end time. So we need to understand this, that this is a prophecy, and here's what we're dealing with, and this is why you need to understand it to tie it in to what we're talking about today. But here's verse 26, For the Eternal saw the affliction of Israel very bitter, for there was not any shut up, nor any left, nor any helper for Israel. There was no helper for them. They didn't have any help. Terrible things were happening in Israel, in, in uh, one nation in particular, the superpower of Israel, America. Well, it's not showing a lot of that superpower today, and there's a reason why. So the Farrar Fenton translates it this way. For the ever-living pitied the immeasurable miseries of Israel, both without and within, and there was no ease for Israel from without and from within. And what is happening within is even more devastating. That we need to understand as well. Then verse 27, And the Eternal said not that He would blot out the name of Israel from under heaven, under heaven, all of those who've lived on this earth, but He saved them at this end time. He saved them by the hand of Jeroboam, the son of Joash. Now, this Jeroboam is a type, an end time type of the Jeroboam that we know so much about and read so much about in the Bible anciently. But there is a modern day Jeroboam, and he's going to save Israel and give them a chance to uh, avert all of these terrible problems that they have. So God can warn them one last time, and that's what He certainly wants to do. If you look at Daniel 8, verses 9 through 12, it talks about an Antiochus, and that is dual. And you can read verses 9 through 12. And they're, they're just casting truth to the ground. And it's both in God's church and in these nations of Israel, especially three of them. And God is very angry and has a lot of wrath because of that. But do we understand that and do we really fear God? This is something we need to understand. Let's look at verse 27. And here's what Jeroboam will do. And the Eternal said not that he would blot out the name of Israel from under heaven, but he saved them by the hand of Jeroboam, the son of Joash. He saved them by a man, used a man to save them. That's happening right before your eyes. Again, you see, God says, I'm not going to let anybody blot out the name of Israel. This is His master plan for this whole world, everybody, not just Israel, but everybody's going to become a part of Israel. That's the plan. But anyhow, verse 28 says, Now the rest of the acts of Jeroboam and all that he did 
and his might, how he warred, and he recovered Damascus and Hamath. Now, that's just a type of what's happening in this end time, and uh, something Jeroboam is saving, and he's not saving Damascus, but he is saving something, and what is it? Well, it has to do with politics and elections. So, if you uh, will give you a transcript of what I'm covering today, and it will explain all of that to you, or much of it. But uh, anciently, there was something saved, and there's going to be something saved in this end time. Notice Ezekiel 2 and verse 1. So, you have to keep your mind on the story flow here in Ezekiel because the context reveals that prophecy that I'm talking to you about today. You can, you can really understand it by just carefully reading the context and see exactly what it says. So here's verse 1, And he said unto me, Son of man, one man here, stand upon your feet, and I will speak unto you. So God is speaking to them, and it goes on to say, It is the children of Israel, nations of Israel. That's what that means in the Hebrew, and it will tell you that if you study into it. And we have it all given to you there. We'll have a booklet on this in a couple of months, but right now I wanted to talk to you about it because it is exciting to see God give you something like America under attack and then show you that it's actually prophesied. It's so important that He wants everybody to understand it, if they are willing to do so. They will be saved temporarily and longer if they look to God and hear His, his uh, warning. So uh, He says in verse 3, And He said unto me, Son of man, I sent you to children of Israel, to a rebellious nation, it should read. To rebellious nations. It's more than one nation. Israel's more than one nation, and prophetic Israel today is just two nations. And there's a third one brought into it the two birthright nations and the scepter nation. That's explained in several of our books that you can get, and uh, you can find out all about it if you don't know what I'm exactly talking about. But he says it's a, it's a rebellious house, and there's an Antiochus, like it talks about in Daniel 8, verses 9 through 12, and that's dual there for spiritual and political, and they're casting truth to the ground. Two Antiochuses there, they're prophesied, and there was one anciently that did that very same thing. Going on to verse 6, it says, And you, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with you, and you that do dwell among scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house." You see, we have to understand that getting God's truth out sometimes is not received well, and there will be some scorpions stinging you from time to time because they don't want to hear about God's prophecy. But they should because it's about God just pouring out blessings upon them, time after time after time. Verse 7 says, And you, one man here, shall speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will refuse, for they are most rebellious." Most rebellious. That sounds like the little book. Now, the little book was a warning and about an Antiochus in God's own church. And here, God is talking about an Antiochus being in God's own nation of America. Now, you have to look into the, this and study it a little, but Antiochus is not a good guy, but he is, God says, there will be such 
such a man, and he will do a lot of damage inside of Israel, three nations even. You can look at that and understand that very much from this transcript you'll be able to receive. So uh, we know that people don't really understand this, but they should and they could. And we're talking about mountain sized problems. If you look in just America and Britain, in the Jewish state, you're going to see a lot of problems and a lot of division. See, nations that are divided can't stand, God says. They're going to fall if they don't get out of that because they tear each other apart and the whole nation apart. But God says He's giving us a chance to do that right now. He really is, and you can prove that from your Bible as well. Rebellious nations, it says, that's what it reads in Hebrew. Verse 8 it says, But you, son of man, hear what I say unto you. Be not you rebellious like that rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat that I give you. God says, Now you go and you deliver this message for God. And if you don't, He says, their blood's going to be on your head. Going to be on your head. Uh, God gives you the job and tells you very uh, blatantly what to do with it. And that's a wonderful thing because God loves His people and He wants them to hear this message and He wants them to repent so all of these problems will not, to, uh, not come to fruition. They will not. The Farrar Fenton says of verse 8, You, however, son of Adam, listen to what I say to you. Be not rebellious like the rebellious family. If you don't do this, their blood is on your head. That is what it says right there in verse 8 and verse 9. It talks about a roll of a book, but it doesn't say the little book. It's a roll of a book. It's a different book. Well, you could say one is a booklet and one is a book, I suppose. God says, Now I want you to go to Israel. And as I said before, if you look at the context, this is aiming at nations. It's aiming at nations. It's a book for nations, three in particular. And you can see that in the book America Under Attack. It tells you all about that. Ninety five percent of God's own people fell away. The little book warned them about why that happened and how it happened. So God always warns us and gives us a chance to repent so He doesn't have to bring the terrible problems upon on us without helping us. He wants, he wants us to turn to Him. So you have to really look at this story flow here, and there is a story flow, a continuity. If you'll just follow it, it will tell you exactly what's happening. Verse 1 of chapter 3 it says, Moreover he said unto me, Son of man, eat that you find, eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. There it is again, the house of Israel. These are three nations, the two birthright nations and the scepter nation that God is most wrathful about. And he, here I wrote in the book, but it's in a book God uh, would say, little book, I think, if it's a little book here, but it is a book. And it's like the little book because its purpose is the same, exposing Satan the devil and his Antiochus, and that's the context here in all of this. One's uh, call it a roll book, other translations, a roll of a book, but it's a book. That's what it means, and it means a book. But here, you see, this is about going to the nations. That's the main subject here, not the little book. It's talked about here too, but only slightly compared to the uh, America Under Attack book. Verse 2. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause your belly to eat, and fill your bowels with this roll that I give you. 
That's exactly what it says about the little book, but this is talking about another book. Then verse 11, we'll go down there where it says, Go get you to them of the captivity, and to the children of your people, and speak unto them, and tell them, Thus says the Eternal God, whether they hear or whether they will forbear. If you look at this anciently, Ezekiel was there with the Jewish people who were in captivity with him. And he, he was not a watchman, he was a prophet. But that's only a type of what happens to God, church, in this end time. A prophet told them what was going to happen and what, what is happening. Where it talks about children in verse 11, it actually means sons. These are sons of God he's talking about, people that are converted and know God's truth, and then they reject it. And they reject God and do the most horrible things you've ever, ever heard about. Just horrifying events unfold. Then uh, you can go on to verse 12 and, and uh, verse 14. The main issue is that America under attack is this way. It does to the superpower, America, what the little book or Malachi's message does for God's true church. They both do a similar work, little book to the church and America under attack, to three nations in particular, and certainly to America, the superpower that leads the way. Then uh, verse 16, it talks about the end of seven days. There are seven days or seven years where we only reached out to the church. And then after that, we, we went on to a watchman work. That's, you see, again, that's reaching out to three nations and the whole world even, all of them. That's what this is about. A watchman really helps us to see that's another work. That's where America under attack comes in. See, God wants us to reach out to nations and tell them what they're doing that's wrong and how He will save them if they will heed His warning. He's going to hold all of us accountable for this. The Laodiceans are in captivity, and that means they're in some real trouble. I think that'll just about cover it as well as I can with this amount of time. Until next week, this is Gerald Flurry. Goodbye, friends. All our literature is available free of charge at no cost or obligation to you. Request America Under Attack is prophesied. America Under Attack, a television transcript, and the little book. Order now. The preceding program was a paid presentation of The Key of David, brought to you by the Philadelphia Church of God.